Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a follow-up service call for a Hashizaki ice maker. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. This is a follow-up visit. So in my previous visit, if you look here, it says on. And if there was a problem, you would get an error code like E1, E2, EE, whatever. So there was no error code, it just said on. And this thing was stuck. It would not produce ice and the bin was actually just about empty. So I troubleshooted the machine and I confirmed that this bin switch was faulty. If you guys notice, the bin switch sits right here. But the unit's running. See it's making ice? That's because I hot wired this thing. We're here back to install the bin switch and I'll tell you how that operates. Okay guys, so I got my meter on resistance. It's gonna read resistance in ohms. Thing is mine does continuity at the same time. There's two wires here. I'm gonna push in these little tiny micro leads inside so it touches the metal. And I'll explain to you how this works. So right now, they're in, and this is the way you would do it. You would do it with continuity. So when the switch is in, you should have no continuity. As you can see, we don't. But when, you, when it opens back up, it's supposed to have continuity. It means turn on, we need ice. Once the ice fills up, it's gonna push down on this, and you're gonna break the continuity, right? So it's basically a switch. The switch opens and turns the machine off. And over here, no matter what you do, you got no continuity. So that's why this machine didn't start. To turn this machine off. Over here, I took off the tape and tie wraps. Here we have a bit of an electrical panel. And you see this right here? These two wires, I basically put them together and that is what actually got this machine running so i bypassed the bin switch like this here's what i did exactly so there's a little clip here the white one that goes into this right here i didn't want to get rid of that i didn't want to cut up the wires so what i did is i took a piece of thermostat wire and i put the two connections together like that is jumped out so i closed the circuit and that's how i got it going but it's hot wired because of that we should be okay. I don't think it stretched out those terminals, but anyways, that's our connection. This is a fairly simple repair. All right, took this out. Okay. Here's our new one. And if you do replace these, keep the screws that keep the old one in place because you know how everything is nowadays, everything's sold separately. You're gonna need those. I'll show you what those screws look like. Anyways, let's take this out, okay? And this is gonna be our new switch. This is the old one, and I took the screws out to keep in here. These little things, you take two of these out, and this thing will pull right off. But this is a very specific type of screw, so you're gonna wanna keep that. So we'll take those two out, and it mounts over there and I'll show you how this goes. Here's the new one. I got my leads again on the two ends. Check it out. At a certain point, we're supposed to have continuity. Over there. But when it goes all the way back, it opens. We have continuity. This one's good. So that's pretty much how you would check the bin sensor with continuity. So... Let's get started. Okay, so as far as this, I'm gonna come out the side. Got two screws holes there. You're gonna match it up with what's there. Let's try to pull this. The screw needs to go in. Hopefully, you guys can see. And just tighten that down. One there. Line this one up somehow. Is that it? I think that's it. 
So you pretty much just gonna make sure this is nice and tight. That's in. Also, as far as this wire, there's a clip here. Let it go up. And there's a clip there. I hope you guys can see. I'll show you guys afterwards. There's another clip here. Let's get that in there. So now the wire is coming up in here. You want to make your connection in there. And as far as this, I can only go one way. Clip it in, and you are done, my friend. Let's neaten up these wires. They sit in here. Keep that down. And over here, originally this had like just tape. So tape would do. Tie wraps would definitely be better, but I just ran out of tie wraps. But let's just keep that closed. They originally had tape. You can see the little remnants in there. Let's put some tape around this to make sure we are safe. Make sure it's snug. We don't want any water getting in there, of course, because it's electrical. And I'm gonna be all right. Let's close this up and let's tape it up. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Goes through this and there. And into our electrical panel and everything is secure now. All right, guys. Moment of truth. On. Let's see if this thing starts. It does take a few minutes. So let's keep an eye on this thing and hope this thing starts. Come on. It should. 2,000 years later. <laughs> oh, there we go. Compressor started. Let's make sure this fully opens up. It, it was producing a bit of ice when we started, so it's probably gonna drop some right now. Oh yeah. So a solenoid opens up, sends hot gas through this pipe. Nice. Awesome sends hot gas through the pipe and actually that ice is so much cleaner since we just descaled it let's see oh yeah that looks nice nice dimple in there and it's like clear before it was like fully it was all cracked up and everything man all right this thing is staying on that is awesome we are now cooling well producing ice Everything is descaled, the ice looks a lot better, it's not cloudy and cracked. And the machine is running. This machine is only about a year old, so for the fact that this thing went bad already, it's not like it just got stuck and needed to be cleaned. It was actually just done. Sad, sad, sad. And if you guys remember, when I installed this unit, it actually didn't produce ice the first time we turned it on. What happened? This thing had a gas leak in it. This had a refrigerant leak. And we had to braze it and do all that work. I mean, it's honestly ridiculous. Hachizaki is a great manufacturer. I don't know what happened to their quality control in the plants. But their tech support is great. Part availability is great. But I don't know. I guess they don't make them like they used to, I guess. We're going to wrap this one up here. Pretty simple repair and yeah not bad if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time